Roll call, please. Mayor Rankin? Here. Vice Mayor Smith? Here. Councilmember Celaya? Here. Councilmember Hawkins? Here. Councilmember Montano? Councilmember Walter? Here. Councilmember Woolridge? Here. Need a motion to adjourn to executive session? Maybe. So we'll go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead and we move. Let's go. We have a motion to move to executive session for the purpose of discussion of the public body regarding town manager selection process in accordance with ARS 3831.03A1. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed, same sign. Motion carries. <clears throat> Need a motion? I'll make a motion we adjourn from executive session. Second. We have a motion to second to adjourn from executive session. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Well, this is the first happy new year and everything. We're going to start off with the first thing that uh, we've never done before. This is the first time in Florence is the invocation and Pastor Wayne Douglas of the Gila River Community Chapel, please. God, our Heavenly Father, we count it all joy to be able to come to you in prayer. We know that uh, you have taught us to pray, and so we invoke your blessings, your manifold blessings upon us tonight in all the uh, deliberations and decisions that shall be made here this evening. May it all be done in decency and in order, and that you might receive the glory and the honor and the praise. In Christ's name we pray, amen. amen. Thank you. Stay up. And you don't know how appropriate that be tonight. Pledge of allegiance for everybody stand, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, and indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Call to the public, call to the public for public comment on issues within the jurisdiction of the town council. Council rules limit public comment to three minutes. Individual council members may respond to criticism made by those commenting, may ask staff to review a matter raised, or may ask that a matter be put on a future agenda. However, members of council shall not discuss or take action on any matter during an open call to the public unless the matters are properly noticed for discussion legal action. Uh, three requests, Ruth Harrison. Ruth Harrison. Good evening, Mayor and members of the Council. My name is Ruth Harrison. I would like to take a few moments to comment on one of the agenda items that you will be considering tonight. The sign at the entrance to historic downtown Florence at the intersection of Main Street and Butte Avenue. Tonight, I am submitting to you petitions signed by Florence business owners, as well as local residents who are asking you to rescind your December 3rd decision to install an electronic message center on the northeast corner of Main Street and Butte Avenue. We, we would welcome a simpler sign, option A, that more properly reflects the historic character in which we all take so much pride. I also want to point out the results of an online poll that appeared in the December 27th issue of the Florence Reminder. It asked for the public's opinion about putting a multicolor electronic bulletin board at the entrance to the Florence Downtown Historic District. 57.9% of those who responded thought that it was in the words of the, the poll, a dreadful idea. I also want to draw your attention to a recent study done by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration. The study focused on the recent alarming increase in the number of pedestrian, um, pedestrian uh, traffic fatalities found throughout the country. The study concluded that drivers 
and pedestrians are increasingly distracted by electronic devices. Finally, I want to point out that drivers entering the intersection at Maine and Butte from the west, intending to proceed east across the intersection, must pay attention to avoid oncoming traffic by steering to the right. Distraction for those drivers could prove deadly. All the more reason to seriously consider installing a simple brick and metal monument sign at the south entrance to the Florence Historic District. Thank you for your attention and for your concern for the best interests of all the, the citizens of Florence and those who visit our town. We know that you care and we hope that you will do what's best, what's right. Thank you. Thank you. Elizabeth Kaiser. Hello, Council. I'm here for two purposes. First, introduce myself since I'm on the agenda. I'm on the Redevelopment Commission. I just wanted to say hello and see you face to face. But secondly, because I'm a doctoral student at the University of Arizona, and I'm facilitating a project here in the town of Florence, and I just wanted to tell you a little bit about it so that when you hear about it, hopefully you'll hear about it through town, you'll know what's going on, and you have been approached first before I've approached everyone else. Um, my doctorate is in public health. Public health looks for patterns in the larger population as opposed to um, individual medicine that deals with individuals on a one-on-one -on -one basis. And the pattern that you probably have heard about is obesity that I'm looking at. And public health looks for solutions to these problems um, that will affect the whole rather than individuals. So while your doctor might tell you that you specifically need to go on a particular diet because of your certain medical conditions, public health looks at trying to improve um, something that would affect everybody. <clears throat> um, obesity leads to a lot of health-related problems, as I'm sure you're aware, heart disease, diabetes, um, heart disease, precursors to heart disease include high cholesterol, high blood pressure, that sort of thing. And these have all been found to be diet-related diseases. Um, <clears throat> while the American diet offers an abundance of mi macronutrients, such as proteins and fats, um, there's a lack of micronutrients in the diet that are found in plant foods. Um, what I'm looking to do is form a coalition um, to ask people in Florence, basically, do you feel that the environment in Florence offers healthy alternatives for you when you want to eat? Um, or do you, do you feel that the food is adequate, the food environment is adequate? Um, so from January to May, I'm going to be holding, well, first of all, in January, I'm going to be holding a couple meetings to try to get people on board to try to look at the food environment. So the first part of this is just an assessment of the food environment. and. Um, We'll just ask this question, survey the public, that sort of thing. Um, find out what people think, basically. That's the main thing. And once we've identified that, I'll produce a report by the end of May, and everyone will have access to it, anyone who's interested. And um, maybe the second phase of this, um, it's a community-based participatory research. So it's driven by the community. So if the community feels that there's um, inad inadequacy in some area, then hopefully we would proceed to try to change some aspect of the food environment. Um, but it's it's not, I'm just a facilitator of the process, not the driver of the process. Um, instead of waiting for, um, you know, we, we don't want to rely on the feds to come up with the solutions. We're looking for local solutions to these sorts of problems, basically. So um, I did bring a flyer, and I'd like to give you each one if you don't mind. And it has my contact information, so if you're interested or have more questions, you can contact me directly by email or by phone. And um, that's it. Basically. You can just give them to our clerk, and she'll give them to us. <laughs> And if anybody else would like a copy, I have um, a number of extras here. You can put them at the back table. Sorry. Thank you and good luck. Thank you. Jim Knapp. Mayor Rankin, Vice Mayor Smith, and Council, uh, thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak to you this evening. I just wanted to speak on behalf of Congressman Gosar and say that he is proud to continue to serve uh, for Florence under Arizona's 4th Congressional District. But more so, I wanted to tell you a little bit about what our district offices can uh, offer to your constituents. Uh, if any of your constituents are having issues with Social Security benefits, Veterans Affairs benefits, uh, if they need their passport yesterday, uh, these are the things that we can help with. Um, any federal agency that they are having issues with we can usually cut through the red tape and try to help them get a solution to their issues. 
Um, so yeah, I'm gonna give my business cards to uh, Lisa as well. If you guys have any questions, give me a call. Otherwise, look forward to getting to know you guys further. Thank, thank you. Thank you for coming. Tell the Congressman congratulations. Will do. Thanks, Mayor. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you. Any other call to the public that didn't fill out or slip? Hearing none, I'll close call to the public. Next item is for public hearings and presentations. Item A, a public hearing on ordinance number 590-13, an ordinance of the Town of Florence, Pinal County, Arizona, amending the Town of Florence Code of Ordinances, Title 15, Land Use, Chapter 150, Development Code, Sections 150.059, Downtown Commercial DC, and 150.047, District Use of Regulations Tables. This is tables B. This is a first reading only. And I will turn the floor over to Mark Eckhoff, who will explain. Good evening. Happy New Year, Mayor Council. Um, I can probably make this fairly quick because we had a work session on this item and some other text amendments that we were going to do. And uh, to the pointer, we are ready to go ahead and move forward with this one. But the DC zoning district is a di is zoning district that is uh, the the core of the historic downtown area. Um, generally running along Maine, going from Butte to Ruggles and Granite to Bailey, but also there was that other little property that was added on that had the four, four homes on it that you can see on the map right around there. Uh, in the DC zoning district, that's where we're encouraging a, a mix of land uses uh, working in harmony with each other, including residential land uses, office land uses, commercial land uses, mixed in together, in integrated vertically or horizontally. And what we wanted to do in this, in this text amendment, if you recall from our uh, work session, was to kind of refine some of the land uses that are allowed in the D.C. district, uh, be more specific about where residential land uses would occur in the district, um, allow certain things that have been uh, over time removed from the district and should be reinserted, such as grocery store as a principal use, uh, a, a hotel as a principal use. And then also uh, one of the things that we propose to do in this text amendment is to essentially eliminate the building setback requirements, uh, whether it be a residential land use or a commercial land use, with the exception of having to comply potentially with uh, a building, and building or fire code, depending on how the, the construction of the building is. Uh, and then the secondly also to uh, get rid of the on-site parking requirement so that in the downtown area, in this D.C. district area, folks that are either uh, redeveloping a property or developing a vacant property, they have the greatest potential to build out that property to the, to the property line. We have several public parking lots in the downtown. We have on-street parking areas, and we feel that in this district, uh, there's a uh, it's greater utilization of the private property to be able to maximize the development on that lot. And there is talk at some point about expanding the DC district a little bit. We had that discussion during the work session and there are some uh, properties that we'd like to look at um, working on doing that in the near future. But tonight this is a public hearing on this, on this item and it will come back to you the next meeting for, for action, adoption of the ordinance. So you if you should be uh, inclined to do so at that time. And I'd be happy to address any questions. Any questions from members of council? Not really. Hearing none, I'll open the public hearing. Does any member of the audience have anything they'd like to say on ordinance 590-13? Seeing no movement, I'll close the public hearing. Item 8B, Introduction and Acknowledgement of Promotions Within the Police Department. David Peterson, Sergeant, and Stephen Guy, Leaves Dispatcher. We have Chief Hughes, who's going to introduce us to our newly promoted staff. Chief. Mayor, Council, I'd like to take this opportunity to introduce to you two new supervisors for the Police Department. And I'll start with Steve Guy. Steve's going to be our new lead dispatcher, and it's a really an important position. It'll give us much more coverage and supervision throughout the days. And um, right now, every, everything points to one manager. And with Steve's help, we'll get a lot more coaching and mentoring. And 
I think it'll be a, a real addition to the police department. Um, Steve's been a, a resident for over nine years, or he lives here in the town of Florence. He's been with the town for over nine years. He's been a supervisor and a trainer for us for some time. He brings uh, just a lot of good things with him, a lot of common sense and a uh, real addition. I think you'll see a lot of good things out of him in the future. And on this side, I have Dave Peterson. He's also a resident of Florence. Um, Dave comes with us. He's a retired New York police officer. He retired out there as a sergeant. So he brings a lot of community policing experience to the town of Florence. And uh, again, I think we'll see a lot of good coaching and mentoring and, and someone that the officers can go to. And it'll help give us that coverage on a 24-hour day basis. So he'll fit right in with our current number of sergeants. Uh, Dave will be a good addition. He too is, uh, has his family here, his wife and his son, uh, Florence residents. So I'm really glad to bring both of them before you and, and just kind of let you know that we're moving forward in a positive way. We appreciate that. We think it's a good idea. And congratulations, gentlemen. Uh, get out there and work hard. That's what we pay you all the big bucks for. OK, congratulations. Next item is item nine, consent Lisa, agenda. Even the two sergeant in the back, we're going to pay them the big bucks too, right? <laughs> Next item is item nine, consent agenda. All items indicated with an asterisk will be handled by a single vote as part of the consent agenda, unless a council member or the member of the public objects at the time the agenda is called. Item A, redevelopment, uh, reappointment of Sherry Berger and Eugene Hordran to the Library Advisory Board with a term to expire December 31st, 2014. Item B, reappointment of Don Pinson to the Parks and Recreation Advisory Board with a term to expire December 31st, 2015. Re item C, reappointment of Barry Reed, James Petty, and Larry Putrick to the Planning and Zoning Commission with a term to expire December 31st, 2015. Item D, reappointment of Elizabeth Kaiser and Sharon Speck to the Redevelopment Commission with terms to expire December 31st, 2016. Item E, reappointment of Georgia Jan Cochran, Chris Reed, Lynn Smith, Betty Wheeler to the Historic District Advisory Commission with a term to expire December 31st, 2015. An appointment of Kathy Adams to the Historic District Advisory Commission with a term to expire December 31st, 2014. Item F, authorization to forward a favorable recommendation to the Arizona Department of Liquor License and Control regarding the Caliente Casa del Sol's application for a special event liquor license for the following dates, February 15th, 19th, 20th, 22nd, and 24th, 2013, for their 2013 Spring Fling events. Item G, authorization to forward a favorable recommendation to the Arizona Department of Liquor License and Control regarding the Florence Garden Mobile Home Association's application for a special event liquor license for Three Parks Wine and Microbrew Fundraiser on January 29, 2013. Item H, acceptance of a public improvements for Anthem at Merle Ranch subdivision units 17B and 18. Item I, approval of the December 3rd, 10th, and 11th, 2012 town council minutes. J, to receive and file the following board and commission minutes. The September 19th and November 28th, 2012 joint use library advisory board minutes the August 16, 2012 Planning and Zoning Commission minutes, and the October 30, 2012 Redevelopment Commission minutes. Mayor, members of council, that is your consent agenda. Does any member of the council wish anything taken off? I just have a legal question on, on uh, <coughs> item F. Uh, to pull it. And let's pull that off, and then we'll talk about it. The, Item F. Item F. <clears throat> Any others? In that case, I'd like to make a motion to accept the agenda, uh, consent agenda as risen with the exception of item F. I second. We have a motion and a second to, 
to approve the consent agenda with the exception of item F. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Under item F, Jim, uh, the organizations are given, uh, I believe they're uh, allowed three licenses a year. Ten. And does this constitute five? No, it's you know, Mayor, honestly, I, Lisa usually handles these, and I don't, I don't know what the allowable a number of licenses is per year. I would actually have to go look it up right now. Um, under background and discussion, I've answered that. It's um, a cumulative total of 10 days per calendar year, and so each one of these days does count for one day. So they are using five of their 10 days. They will have five days remaining. It changed from the three, because there used to be three. Yeah. Three. Then I have no problem with it. Yeah, it's got it right there. It says 10 days in the calendar year under background and discussion. Okay, and we need a motion to approve item F. I make a motion to approve item F. Second. We have a motion and second to approve item F. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, same sign, motion carries. <coughs> Item 10, unfinished business. A, reconsideration. It's also for discussion approval, disapproval of a design review application for the Town of Florence Historic District Monument sign located at the northeast corner of Main Street and Butte Avenue in Florence, Arizona. HDAC number 208-12-DR. Mark Eckhoff has done a little bit more research into this and is going to provide you with a presentation and overview of this item. Uh, Mayor, members of the council, uh, back to the design review uh, for the consideration of the downtown historic district monument located at the northeast corner of Main Street and Butte, Butte Avenue. Uh, as you know, that is where National Bank of Arizona is constructing their, uh, their site right now. And there has always been a plan, well not always, but for, uh, at least for the last decade or so, there's been discussions of some sort about putting a monument sign on the corner there. Now the type of sign has, has uh, varied over the years and recently we brought forward to you uh, five options for the uh, possible monument sign that could be located at that corner. All right, so you can see in perspective, so uh, on the site plan, this is Main Street and this is Butte and the new construction of the bank and the bank is at this location, the monument sign is on the corner here. Now you have five well, you have several options to consider. Um, previously, when this was brought to the Historic District Advisory Commission and also to Council at the last meeting, there was a decision to go forward with one sign that had the electronic message center in it. Um, but all these options that I'm showing you are still on the table tonight. And in your reconsideration, if we wanted to pursue one of these, uh, that would be a perfectly acceptable route, of course. Uh, option A is your is the most standard sign, basic sign of all the options. And that is going to be uh, no, no panels uh, for, for placards or, or posters or electronic message center, just straightforward historic downtown Florence, Arizona, and those letters will be back, backlit. So this will be a very attractive sign. They'll have a rustic metal look to it. It'll have bricks that are, uh, uh, likely going to be sourced from this area, so there's a combination of uh, some historic elements uh, and a little bit, a little bit more of a modern sign. Uh, then you you have other options that incorporate an electronic message center, a panel board. This is a, an area where essentially you're going to put a pre-printed message on there, paper message or a vinyl message that would have to be applied there. So you'd have to go there physically to change that message. There's a larger electronic message center that uh, certainly wasn't popular with anyone. A larger panel, so again, this is the pre-printed poster message that could be utilized. And, you know, there's definitely some issues with, with doing that, the fact that you can't really change the message on a, on a regular or an easy basis. And then the option that was approved by the Historic District Advisor Commission and the uh, Mayor and Council at the uh, previous meeting 
option, option F. It does have the electronic message center. Still has the area on the top where it says historic downtown Florence. But I want to reiterate that uh, we're, we can go with any of these signs. And I think the, the critical thing, obviously, is to build on the momentum of the courthouse restoration getting done, the bank going up, and some other projects, starting some engineering work on the framework area, Territory Square. Uh, we have some momentum going. It would be great to get a sign here on the, on the corner. Staff would, uh, quite frankly, be happy with any, any of these options. We've already expressed what the advantages might be of an option F, but option A or the others are perfectly acceptable as well. We did uh, thank you to, to Public Works for making a, uh, a mock-up of the sign, and these images show you generally where a sign would be located. Uh, we did, and it would actually go back just a little bit more, but the uh, the bank sign was there, um, blocking us from going back and angling it a little bit differently. But um, basically, experimented with all the locations to make sure that when the sign is on the corner, again, whether it's option A through F, uh, that it is clearly visible from from all viewpoints and not uh, impeded significantly by the pole that is there for the traffic signal. And uh, I'd be happy to address any, um, any questions you may have on this item. T Tara, you're the one that asked this to be put back on the agenda? I did. Um, I received a few phone calls and I wanted to have the opportunity to bring this up again to give everybody an opportunity who wanted to speak, to speak, to revisit this issue. Um, I've heard, you know, maybe an electronic message center would be better on 79 and to keep the historic part of Florence the historic part of Florence. So I wanted to grant everybody the opportunity to explore those options. Do any member of the, count or the public like to have any comment on this? <clears throat> Tom. First of all, I'd like to ask a question. The way this is written, to approve or disapprove, for this protection, for this option F. Now, my question on that is, this isn't written where we could approve another one tonight, is it? It's for reconsideration, and then we've included discussion approval and disapproval to allow you free reign, like if this is happening for the first time. Correct? That was the intent. Is that correct, Mr. Minotto? So, Mr. Yes. May, your, your question is, are you limited to simply approving uh, or disapproving the application as it currently sits? I don't think so. I mean, I think Lisa's right. The intent was to uh, afford um, Council Member uh, Walter the opportunity to open it up for discussion again. That's how I understood it. I understand that. Okay, then since we're I, I, here to discuss. I got a question. It's a legal deal. The what? Jim, I guess the question Go ahead. would be the same as what Tom asked. According to our agenda, it was published. It's just for consideration on F. So to me, you'd have to go ahead and either approve or disapprove F and schedule this for the next meeting. This, this is the same exact wording that appeared to, for you at the last council meeting where we laid the, the options out before you. So um, while you're considering the application, the options for the sign to do the sign, which, which, how you would like the sign to look, what the layout of the sign is going to be, is included in the application. You've already approved the application. Now we're just coming back to saying which sign do you actually want, basically. Well, the last one when it was on here, when we talked about this, it talked about option E. F came in after it wasn't on the yeah. part of the. the information that was presented. That's so correct. Now that we've already approved option F, is discussion leading toward are we going again to look and see are we approving option F or disapproving option F? Or are we going back to the original question, which was are we looking at option E? What we've brought back to you for reconsideration is the entire application. 
So back before you, placed before you, is the option. Do you want to leave it the way you've left it and go ahead with the approval that you've already given staff? Or do you want to make a reconsideration and pick a different style of sign when you approve the application? Personally, I'd like to go ahead and take care of this item F and then bring it back once the rest of the council has had more time to look over the rest of the options. My reasons for doing this are because this does not hold with the historic district codes a digital sign. Secondly, its height does not go with the codes in the historic district. I believe since the council passed these codes, we should go by these codes. We cannot also turn around to our hardware store, which we did, and said, no, you can't put up a digital sign, because that's against the code. But now we're turning around and saying, oh, but the council and the town can do anything they want. No, what's right for the goose is right for the gander. If we don't like it, we change it. At this point, I would like to go ahead and either have it approved or disapproved on F and bring it back for reconsideration of another type of sign at the next meeting is fine with me. I don't care. I just, the way it's written, I think we've got to get rid of F because that's the way it reads. Motion to approve or disapprove. Can you confirm the height and code restrictions, Mr. Echo? Yes, I can. And just for clarification, the, the application is for a monument sign at the specific corner, and the options are all, are all of them. So it could be A through, A through F. Previously, it was A through E. E was modified and became F. But the application is indeed, uh, the application is generic in itself. That it's for a monument sign at this corner. The options are A through F. Uh, so I would feel perfectly comfortable, and I think Lisa has expressed this as well, that if you wanted to, in your reconsideration, choose another sign, uh, that could be the path that's taken tonight, or it could be postponed until another As, as far as height guidelines. Um, in regards to the height of the sign. From curb height, <clears throat> as it reads. The height of the option F sign is six and a half feet. And what is the historic district code? A, a monument sign is four, four feet. Correct. Mm -hmm. Now I can understand a variance for a sign other than the digital sign because of the entrance. I can also see that if we don't go for a digital sign, we should have enough funds in there <coughs> to put a sign, a monument sign, at both ends of the historic district, rather than the amount of money going into this one particular sign. Vice Mayor, that's, in that itself, this is a very good point. Um, the height of the option A sign is five and, five and a half feet. Um, so that would also exceed the four foot, but ex in experimenting with being able to get those certain, even the standardized sign with just the wording on it, uh, we wanted to make sure that it is, since it's at a key intersection that is, it's large enough to be visible. But in regards to the cost, uh, one benefit of going with the A is that I believe this would probably be a, a uh, this sign would be included in the streetscape improvements that the bank would be doing and then we would actually we've been getting bids to do a option a type of sign um, potentially on the silver king property so that you do have a sign coming both ways into the downtown historic district um, and we would be able to fund that that sign as we are funding this one if we go with option a then there's no cost to to a i believe or it's going to be very minimal cost we would then have the funds clearly to pursue the other sign on the other end of Main Street. Because so. if I'm not mistaken, I could be wrong on the amount of monies for this digital assignment. It's something like $42,000. And I know we're not paying it all, but I think 
that's an awful lot of money for a sign. I think the intention on the sign when, when they were looking at the uh, one with the lights was to create an uh, opportunity for public announcements and public address to the people. Um, that was one of the things that, that was uh, considered. I think that uh, the comparison of uh, true value uh, and this sign is apples and oranges. You're, you're looking at an already historic building that, that things should stay uh, compatible with at at the true value where at this building you're looking at brand new materials that they're going to be used to build this material they're not going to go back and bring adobe and and uh, and wood siding and that type of stuff this this is a transitional point on main street and i think you need to keep that in consideration it's not going to be a historic building that is sitting on that lot I think the first thing we got to look at is because we had already approved option F, we need to do a vote to rescind option F and like uh, or approve or approve it, you know, so we have to look at that first and then go back and start over on the drawing board. We can't, we've already made a decision. Now we have to make a decision to rescind it or approve it, not say, well, that was good. Now we're going to re-vote again. We can't re-vote. It's already been voted on. So we need to vote to rescind or approve option F. And the other thing I don't like about the writing, which is pointed out to me again by the mayor, the recommendation is to approve. However, the option to us now is to approve or disapprove. So I'll wait for the uh, mayor to ask for a motion. Bill, you have anything? Oh, um, go ahead. I think we thought. I think we probably need to study this a little more. I mean, obviously, there's uh, over the last couple of three weeks, uh, people have thought about it a little more, and I, I think yeah, we probably need to maybe look some at all these options, or maybe even some new options. Uh, Did Mark state the record how many people were in the online vote? No, I'm, I'll bring that up from what you told me. Um, do you want to go ahead and give him those numbers, Mark? Yeah. Mark, Mark, could you, could you tell the public exactly how many votes were cast on your poll? I believe it was 19. 19, okay, thank you. So one nine, 19. One nine. One nine. Yes. 19. 19. 19. Tara, do we have anybody from the historic district here tonight objecting, do we? From the commission, the board, historic. I don't see any of them here. Tara. Well, oh, excuse me, Bill. Weren't we also uh, supposed to, before we made this final? My understanding, I thought, was that we would have a price, uh, a definite price on it. And it's in the information. And I'm, I'm wondering, you know, I haven't. It's in there. Is it? I've seen it. Um, one resident had brought up to me um, visibility. If we go with the electronic sign, who are we trying to communicate with? They, they offered the option of, you know, 79 would be more appropriate for an electronic message center, so that way the people that travel in and out of our community on a daily basis would understand, you know, hey, these are some of the events that are happening. Maybe you want to stay, and it would promote more tourism, more people to actually come into the historic portion of the town. You know, I've had uh, the experience of uh, listening to some of the people on the Historic Commission, <laughs> as well as being on council and learning what we're doing here. I realize that we have, there was a monument sign, and I think <coughs> it's a nice one, that is in front of the Copper Company office. Again, that wasn't according to code. Now, we've got to go by our codes. We can't just keep doing things without even saying, let's do a variance. So at this point, I can do nothing but uh, make a motion as soon as you're ready, Tom. <laughs> okay, let me, let me just throw my two cents in here before we make a motion. I think there's three things that I'm considering. One is the cost of the sign. That's pretty expensive. But two is 
the ability to advertise the historical district in a new building that will have a new sign. Under, under the code, if I correct, the new building can have a new sign. Is that correct, Mr. Eckhoff? Mayor, members of the council, the National Bank of Arizona um, could potentially have a monument sign if it were set a certain distance back from the, from the property line and did not exceed four foot in height. They have actually decided to integrate the, their commercial signage into the architecture of the building so they don't have the need for a freestanding monument sign. Okay. In, my third, in my third observation is, and it's kind of, I think of what we're all looking at. Ted down at the bottle stop had trouble with an ATM sign that blinked. A stop sign. It's, a, huh? it's an open air closed sign. Well, no, the one he started off with an ATM. <coughs> That's the one we got on to him about. Okay, well, it's another one. <laughs> okay, that was one of the first things after I got elected that was brought to my attention. So I took a look at this sign. I thought, well, there's this be a good advertisement for the historical district. And I, and I went down on Main Street the other night and I was looking and, and I see neon in, in Ted's place. I see neon in uh, uh, the hardware store. I see Belva's light, her uh, sign up above that's lit. <clears throat> I saw the Florence Copper Project sign that's there. And I got to thinking, I said, here all these signs are, and, and according to code, they're not supposed to be there. How did they get there? Well, they're variances. The historical district gave them variances. I guess we approved it. To me, what that's telling me is for 35 years or 30 to 35 years, we sit here and, uh, and the council, prior councils and this council and other councils I've been involved with, have sit here and watched Main Street deteriorate. It hadn't gone anywhere. It, businesses are going down. They're not going up. <clears throat> what I think is I made a mistake in voting for the sign, okay? And the reason I made the mistake of voting for it because it goes against our code. If we're gonna, if we're gonna be, go by the book, we should go by the book. If that's the case, then I'm suggesting to the council that we need to direct staff and we need to have work sessions on these and change the code to make them where they're compliance downtown. And then I'd also ask the council, those of you who grew up here in Florence and uh, some of the people in the audiences that <clears throat> were here is, is back in the 50s and 60s, what was Main Street? Main Street was beautiful. Main Street had businesses going. And you know what? Almost every one of them had a neon sign outside, <clears throat> including the Silver King. Had a great big hotel sign up there. Remember that, Wilbur? Everybody had one. To me, historic Florence is the 50s and 60s. It's not the 1800s. It's not 1970. It's the 50s and 60s. And we're trying to get these merchants on Main Street to stay here, to make a living. They need to advertise their business. They need to get it in. And Tom, I agree with you that I, on this motion here, I think it, I agree with Reuben. It ought to be uh, a motion to disallow or to re rescind our vote last meeting on option F, to rescind it, not to disapprove it or approve it, but to rescind it. And if anybody would like to make that motion. I'd like to make a motion to rescind or disapprove option F for case HDAC-08-12-DR. And for staff to bring this up to the Board of Trustees. for staff to bring this up at a future meeting for the rest of the options. I second it. We have a motion to second to rescind our, what we did last meeting under option F. Any other discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Aye. aye. Motion carries. Under new business, 
Last item, Mayor's appointment of Chair Elizabeth Kaiser and Vice Chair Ann Cartel Bresson to the Development Commission with a term to expire on December 31st, 2013. At this time, as Mayor, I will appoint to the Chair of the Air, uh, Redevelopment Commission, Elizabeth Kaiser, and to Vice Chair of the Redevelopment Commission, Ann Cartier Benson. Reason, I guess it's Brisson. Okay. This is the second call to the public. Anybody in the call to the public for public comment? This is another item I had, we've had uh, added to the agenda. It's the second call to the public for public comment on issues within the jurisdiction of the town council. Council rules limit public comment to three minutes. Individual council members may respond to criticism made by those commenting, may ask staff to review a matter raised, or may ask that a matter be put on future agenda. However, members of council shall not discuss or take action on any matter during an open call to the public unless the matters are properly noticed for discussion and legal action. Does any member of the public have any comment? Hearing none, I close the second call of the public. Call of the council. Tommy. Just a note of appreciation for all of our volunteers that have come <coughs> to the Netherlands and the ones that have come back for uh, all of our special committees. Uh, uh, I remember in the past where we've had uh, difficulty getting enough people to make a meeting and, and it's, it's really good to see uh, public participation. It's very important and we appreciate participation. Thank you very much. Ruben? I think we did a good job finishing the year 2012 and I'm excited to see what the Town of Florence does for 2013. Tara? Um, I would like to inform public, if you're not already aware, of the library and their new e-readers that they have and the selection of e-books that you can go in and check out. And also, along with Tom Salaya, um, thank you for all of the volunteers who offer their time and services to the town. Yep. I have nothing. Sorry. I don't have anything to know. Tom? Yeah, the uh, Pinal County Historic Society Museum this coming Sunday on the 13th at 2 p.m. is having a special speaker. This is free to anybody who wants to come. Uh, this gentleman has written many, many books. He's been contributed to the Encyclopedia Britannica. And he's speaking on foods, Arizona-type foods that have come out in Arizona. So if you want to learn how to build a taco, it's at 2 p.m. <laughs> Alexi, first of all, Happy New Year to everyone. Also like to remind everyone that the special work session we had scheduled for the 14th on the uh, trash situation has been po indefinitely postponed to a later date, maybe the 28th, we're not sure at this time, but that's what we're looking at. Uh, we will have an executive, or not an executive session, we'll have uh, I guess it will be executive session on the 14th to interview uh, candidates for the town manager's job. We've got some decisions coming up to be made, this council does, that are going to direct the town for years to come by the selection of, of projects coming on board, new personnel that the town will have, and we're just going to need all your support we can get and help. And we may not agree on everything. Uh, it'd sure be nice if we could, but you know, that's the way they do it in Russia. If you don't agree, they shoot you. Well, this isn't Russia yet. And folks, uh, we just want everybody to know that this council up here is dedicated to improving the quality of life of the town of Florence. We want to improve the opportunity to be able to shop here in Florence and do whatever we can to assist in those endeavors. To my fellow council members, I would challenge you tonight <coughs> that let's do something this year. Let's don't sit around and do a study on it and survey it. Let's get off our duffs and get something done. If we're gonna do anything, let's do it now. Uh, yeah. At this time, I will tell you that I'll probably make some people mad this year I'm not planning to run again for election as mayor. I'll be 70 years old then, and it's time to maybe sit back and 
watch other youngsters do things. But over this next three years, we've got a job ahead of us, and let's don't let the people of Florence down. Need a motion. Make a motion. We adjourn to executive session. I'll second. We have a motion and a second to move, adjourn to executive session. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed, same sign. Motion carries.